with a look at your markets now, we are seeing that the JSE closed deep in the red today. The RAND also gaining some strength, and we're going to find out about all those movements in just a moment. But here's a look at how your markets performed this evening. Let's break down those numbers now with Martin Smith from Anchor Capital. Martin, as always, many thanks for your time this evening. Let's talk about that overall performance on the markets that we're seeing. Yesterday was it actually a good day for the JSC, but today we closed in the red. Uh, what are some of the catalysts that contributed to this? There's a few things that we saw on the market today. So SA Inc. type shares were, were sold off quite aggressively. And I think it just also in line with um, Nasbas uh, kind of giving back some of the gains that we saw uh, last week with Tencent's move uh, post the, uh, the ban list coming out of the U.S., not including them and, and Baidu. So it's a bit of Tencent, Tencent and Nasbas uh, giving back. It's a bit of um, SA Inc. being sold off, but also Resi's that have also retraced a little bit on the back of what I think is a little bit of profit taking. Right. Let's get on to some company news now. Sasol, uh, they released an update today. They were up about 10% uh, at some stage in early afternoon trade. What do you make of what they've had to say, especially because of what's happened at the Lake Charles project that they uh, endeavored? So the result out of, um, out of Sasol, so it was just a trading statement for six months, was a lot better than people expected and definitely a beat on consensus. So that's why we saw the, the, the share price uh, go up the way it did. A uh, couple of interesting points are that their cost saving and soft savings initiatives were really good and also chemical prices were a little bit better than expected. So overall, quite a positive set of numbers. What's going to be interesting to see is when the actual results come out, which is um, on the 22nd of February, to see what happens with their rights issue. So it still remains to be seen if they're going to do a rights issue, but at this stage, it looks like it might be smaller than initially um, anticipated given the better performance as well as the, the sale of assets that's come through. So overall, quite positive from Sassel, but definitely keep an eye on the, the results uh, coming out next month. Right, and then let's talk about Spur Corporation. They're releasing an update as well. Obviously, COVID-19 has had an impact on all uh, the restaurants or the restaurant industry in general. Uh, what did you make of what Spur Corp had to say this afternoon? So Spurs, as you can imagine, absolutely in the eye of the storm in terms of COVID. One, from a restriction on restaurants, and two, also just from a, a consumer that's now a little bit constrained. Um, so it, it, it's, we could expect the numbers to be what they were, and uh, it was down about 30% in terms of revenue. So I think management did quite well, and, and again, a quite a difficult uh, uh, environment for them, again, given that, that they are kind of in the eye of the storm. Uh, it's one that's going to be very much pinned on, on a recovery of the consumer and the economy. I'm happy to sit on the sidelines for now to see what happens, because uh, if there is a recovery, this, this share could do quite well. But again, I'm happy to kind of sit and wait and see how, how things unfold in terms of COVID and rollout of vaccines and things like that. Yeah, Martin, you're on the sidelines when it comes to Spur Corp, but where are you when it comes to GameStop, right? It was a big hype <laughs> yesterday, locally and internationally, making news about the record-breaking uh, prices that the stock share uh, saw. And I, I really just want to understand where that hype is coming from and uh, really what this all means in terms of the betting from hedge fund managers and shorting and and the like it's an absolutely incredible incredible story what's unfolded um, overseas so on reddit you've got an online community and there's about three million people on a on a um, forum called wall street bets and essentially what's happened on there is they said let's all go out and go buy gamestop um, which essentially a lot of people talk about their business model being a little bit obsolete. So you, you had all of these, the slew of money coming to market. Most of it, in term, most of it was leveraged um, buying into the share itself, which was trading at about $20 at the beginning of the year. 
It's now at 300 and it's about $320 as we speak. So you had a lot of, a lot of retail investors putting a lot of money into the share on leverage. And this share had a massive, massive amount of short interest in it, mostly from hedge fund managers. And essentially the slew of liquidity came in, people bought the shares and hedge fund managers had to close out their short positions, which means they also had to then rebuy the shares itself, causing the share to, to rally even further. So it's an incre incredible set of circumstances that has unfolded and definitely maybe shaken the hedge fund industry a little bit in terms of what's happened. I mean, the numbers are about $5 billion that were lost from hedge fund managers on the back of the short um, in, game, in GameStop. So it's just a, a, an incredible thing that we've seen out of kind of the Robinhood traders. Uh, Robinhood is obviously an app, an online uh, trading system that we've seen in the States. And it looks like the power of, of the, the retail investor is it's maybe here to stay. Right. I know yesterday when I was reading the news about this particular story, they called it a David and Goliath situation. Uh, David being, of course, the likes of GameStop. Martin, thank you very much for your time. That